going to continue developing our wireframe. Now bear in mind that we will actually convert the wireframe to a storyboard and we will base everything in the site off of this. So everything that I have in the content currently is what would appear on every page. I'm going to go into the pages option here and I'm going to call this common content. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose set this as master page. Now I can create new pages. And I'm going to create, we'll just start with the index, which is my home page. And I'm going to create, we'll just do JavaScript. The others would follow like that. In fact, I'd copy it and modify. So when I go into the index page, I'm now on the index page and I go into my layers, you can see that my master page layer is locked. So all of this common content is going to exist everywhere on this page. I'm probably going to create this site in Drupal or another content management system. I'm going to add a symbol to myself, like this is my I image symbol. I want to add a symbol to represent a video because my pages are going to be very video heavy. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool. I'm going to set it to white with a black outline. Size doesn't really matter here. And then I want to put a symbol inside of this. So I'm going to choose my polygon tool. And here I've set my sides to three. My angle is to automatic. And that will allow me to put in a triangle, which I want to fill in black. And then I can arrange this and rotate it. I did not mean to scale it. I want to rotate it. Okay, and so this is going to, for me, represent that this is a video. And I will grab that symbol all together, and I will choose Control, Convert to Symbol, I'll call it Video, and I'll save it to my common library so I could use it in other wireframes. And what I'm going to have here I'm going to have two different portions to my main page. I will have newest video because I will have a news feed on my front page on whatever I added most recently. And then I will have, let's put in some common library elements, HTML. I'm actually going to have some links on my front page to things that would be useful for my students. Oops, and I just did something I really probably shouldn't have done. I, Once you have it in the document library, you're just supposed to keep grabbing it from here. So I'm going to put in links I'll worry about what links they are later, and then I can grab them here. I can go into the symbol, into my properties. Let's go into our alignment. Align left edge. And center them. So those are going to represent links. They'd be longer, but that's where links are going to go. This is going to be my newest video. It's going to take up a little bit more room than that, so we can always resize it. By using my tools over here, I can don't want to do that. I want to change it to the scale tool. We spent too much time in Flash with the free transform. 
and then I would typically have some text underneath this. And when I represent text, I'm just going to put in another symbol for that. I usually just take a few lines and set them up with sort of jagged edges to look like a paragraph. I like these to be relatively neat. I'm not trying for per perfection here, but we can use our align tool again to make these all line up. So I can just grab everything with my selection tool. Align to the edge, distribute, make them four pixels wide. Oh, that one's not perfect. Now we'll just delete those and redraw them. It's easier to see if your lines are straight when they're a little thicker. So we'll grab the line tool again. And it's worth the time for me to do this because I'm going to save this as a symbol and I'm going to use it for text all over my site. And this will represent paragraph text. And we'll have the last one be a little bit shorter. Okay, so again, I can select these lines, grab them all, make them line up, make them distributed, make them all four pixels wide, and there I have my paragraph. So now I'm going to reuse this multiple places, so I'm going to save it as a symbol. Convert to symbol, we'll call it text, we'll save it to the common library in case I want to use it again. And then I have text describing my video. And I could keep this going by taking additional video down the page. I'm not actually going to do that here, but that gives me my index page. So that's what my index page is going to look like. For my JavaScript page, let's swap over to JavaScript, and you can see all my common content is saved. I'm going to my layers. Now here, I'm going to want an outline on the side. And these, again, will be links. And this is going to link by lesson to my lessons. So lesson one, lesson two, etc., etc. So I could actually go in here and for the symbol instead of link, I can say lesson number. And that should change it in here. Let's try that again. Oops, we want that. I didn't want to change that. I want to change my symbol properties so that my text value is lesson number, and I'm not going to worry about the actual number right here. Font's fine. I'm going to make it bigger. We could actually link these later if I wanted to go to that level. I don't. So we'll delete this one, and we would end up with 15 lessons. Let's view this at a little bit larger zoom. And again, Alt lets me copy these. And that's representative. It would actually end up with like 15 of those. And we will make sure that they are neatly aligned, distributed, and that would be what's on the left hand side. It would be specific lessons under JavaScript. I would put text at the top. I would make it a fairly large font. Bold, because this is going to be an H1 tag. Arial's fine. We don't worry about color yet. And we would just say JavaScript, because we want to clearly identify which page that we're on. So this would be my JavaScript page. And then I would have whatever 
given lesson is going to identify which lesson we are at on. I think I want to move these all down a bit. And this isn't the whole reason we're doing this here is to plan where everything is going to go. So in text underneath that, I'm going to put in a smaller text that's not bold. We'll make it italic and we will say lesson number blah 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 but I'd have a description of what the lesson was so that just shows me that I'm going to have my lesson text and then I will have text here and it will probably have a video and then I will probably have some more text and then frequently I will actually have and I did not save my image when I created a image symbol so I can do that now I can use my I don't want to do a polygon I want to do a rectangle and create a small rectangle here set the color to white set the edge to black and the color width to three and I can put in a couple of lines to represent images because typically I will have images screenshots from the code that I've written so we will add this as a symbol as well and that will allow us to oh I did have one in there okay that will allow us to use it here to represent an image and I can always if I need to scale it to be representative typically it's not going to be the same size or shape as my video and it may go off the page here so I'm going to just make it a little bit skewed like that to represent an image that's just sort of representative that I'm going to have text in an image now the nice thing is once I have that page created my other pages are going to look just like this so I can copy this by dragging over that and this one would become web scripting and I could go forth and do that the next thing that I would do here is I would convert this save all of these pages and then add real colors real graphics then it becomes a storyboard and then we can really start to work on making the site look like what it will actually look like when we create the site but the first step is wireframing to have it show where everything will be placed. We'll go on in the next video and we'll convert this to a storyboard, putting in colors, putting in some images, and adding some real text. And then we can actually create into a proto prototype with the links working. So that's the end of making a multi-page wireframe.